one of the things that I do when I'm at home or in this case in a hotel room with nothing to do is to look at plugins and see what they do in the background. One of the tools that I use every day is a program called Smart from Rational Acoustics. It is a dual FFT uh, application. It's also an RTA and also an SPL logger. So basically what a, what a transfer function application is going to do is it's going to measure the difference between the signal you're sending to the PA and the signal that's coming into a mic. It's, it's telling you frequency response differences. It's going to plot it out. It'll tell you amplitude. It'll also tell you phase and time. Smart actually allows you to average the response of the PA through several different microphones, much like SIM, like my SIM. So it is something that I use every day. So to me, it's it's a screwdriver. It's a, it's a pair of pliers and all that. But what I like to do is actually route audio internally. You know, I'll use Logic or Pro Tools or something like that. I'll drop a plugin in, especially if it's a new plugin, I'll kind of drop it in and, and see what it's doing to the frequency response and what its latency is and things like that. Now, there's also a program called Dr. Plugin, which also tells you any dynamics, it also tells you harmonic distortion and, and things like that, but you're not able to actually capture the trace. So this is something that I do. I'm going to actually get to pull up the, the Waves NX. I turn off the room. We're going to do an EQ solo. I tend to use a lot of... See if I can find it, Audio-Technica M50X. Now this is the Harman curve, this is the updated one. So right here it tells me phase up top and frequency response below. Let's see if there's any, any delay to it. There's no delay, we're good. Okay, so what I can actually do is now capture that trace. We're just gonna call it that. But let me bring back that plugin, and we're going to go back down to where it says Legacy. Uh, legacy, what was the old M50X? It was this. So you see the difference between what it used to be in green and what it is in that really dark yellow, which I should probably change, <laughs> change out so we can actually see. But the Harman curve basically gives it a, a low-end bump and a uh, attenuated high frequency. Uh, Dr. Sean Olive did extensive testing with listeners to find out, you know, what is pleasing in headphones and, and loudspeakers. So that's something I need to dig more into because in my situation, I'm tun tuning PAs to a certain tonal balance, a curve. And I am actually attenuating high frequencies kind of on a linear, a linear slope. And I'm ex exaggerating the, the bottom end, trying to make it big and warm because we're listening. My particular show that I'm mixing with the classic rock band is about 100 dB A weighted. That's kind of where, kind of where we sit. So if I go louder than that, I have to I have to uh, darken it a little bit and reduce some of the low end. But as I, if I go quieter, I gotta do the Fletcher Munson thing or equal loudness curve. I need to add some high frequency and add some low frequency. But that's going to be a story for another video. So let's just look at this right here. What I also do is take, for instance, this is Waves NX, but I need to know what a plugging is doing, or if there's a certain sound that I like that I'm getting in Pro Tools or, or Logic or something like that, I want to transfer it to the live situation, I'll smart it. I'll capture a trace. And then whatever other piece of hardware or plugin that I want to use, I'll try to match up that curve. Now it's time for the road tip of the day. First tip I ever learned was always sleep with your feet towards the front of the bus. Now that we have this trace for the Harman curve for the M50Xs uh, stored as a trace. I'm actually going to go and I'm try to transfer this curve to a different plugin. So I'm going to pull up a very popular EQ plugin called Pro Q3 from Fab, Fab Filter. And if you can see very quickly what I'm doing, what's happening in the background. Okay. What I need to do is find these EQ center points. And if I trace over here, this big well right there is about 158. So right there. And this is something that you end up doing when you're tuning PAs is get familiar with interaction of bandwidths between filters. Okay, somewhere in there, I'm a little bit to the right. There's a shelf at the bottom, somewhere in here. Let's see if I can get that to come up. 
pretty good there. There's also this area right here at 67. I need to give it a little bump. Let's see if I can get it. But now there's a little bit of dip. I need it at 35. But I'm too wide of the bandwidth. Okay, touch this up a little bit. So we'll come back to it soon. See if I can shrink this a little bit. All right, so now we've got what frequency is this that we need to deal with? 328. A little bit hard to see, move around. You may want to watch this at 2x. Kid does. She watches stuff fast on YouTube. Okay. And you also notice the phase. These are giveaways as to what kind of filter is being used. So if you're matching the phase and the frequency response, you're pretty much on to the same filter that, that they're using. So you see how it starts to shift a little bit. So that's probably a, a big shelf up here that they're using to kind of get the whole thing to come down just a little bit. Kind of hard to see there. All right. So now we've got the filter at 2.77. Just going to grab it, kind of get in there a little bit. My AQ is too wide because it's affecting too much outside of the frequency. A little bit deeper cut. Still maybe, it might be a little too much shelf going on. Because this area right here is below the trace. Where are we at right here? 4.31-ish. Start it here and pull it down. Tighten up the Q. Q is too wide. It's affecting too much outside. Need a little bit more cut. Yeah, a little bit of a beach ball right there. So I need to tighten. A little bit more cut. Let's go after this right here. 5.3. Still too wide. Now you'll see how these filters are going to interact with each other when they're side by side like this. And that gets to be a little bit of a fine tune game that has to happen. Where does it need to be? 7.78. 7 Somewhere in there, but I gotta tighten that cue quite a bit. Pull that down. That boost gets back back up. It's just a dance between adjacent filters. Be close this one here, point two seven. A little bit more cut. Okay, and then we got a shelf up top. So I'm just going to grab something here, see what I can do with it. But if it affects too much, then I'm going to have to deal with that. So let me do. Hmm. It's none of that. Maybe it is that. Uh, let's change the cue. Here we go. Cue down. Bring the frequency down. Pretty close. So you can see what's going on here. That's the curve that we made up to match the the uh, waves and X compensation curve. Our phases, like here, there is here's a giveaway. So we're not quite on the money with with our frequency response. So we can work on tightening that. That's funny. It's it's the phase that's telling us that it's not this. So 
it's probably the Q issue. Yeah, there it is. A little bit lighter Q, a little bit more of a bump here. So you're going to ask yourself, well, what's what's the use of this? There's a couple things. In my situation, I may have something in Pro Tools sounding really nice and that I want to want to repeat, but I have to transfer it to the console. So what I actually did during pandemic time was I was spending a lot of time with my band in Pro Tools. I got drums to sound better than what I was doing live using Pro Q3, especially with the art with the RTA function there. Um, so I was able to get a good sound using Pro Q3. I smarted that response. When I got to my console, I actually used the four band rotary on there and matched up the response for that. Let me tell you, it wasn't easy because there are some things that I was doing, um, like you always hear about pull tech, you know, you can boost, you can boost a frequency with a cut right next to it and create these, these odd shapes. Exactly what I was doing. I was boosting on a low shelf, but then using a high pass to come in and kind of shape the bottom end of drums and things like that. But I was able to use smart to transfer my EQ curves over there. This also comes in handy when you are, say you are switching consoles in a monitor situation, right? You have four or five or six stereo mixes that you need to transfer over. You need to transfer over all of your channel strips, but maybe you don't have a full rehearsal to do it and you gotta be quick. What I found useful was smarting each channel and that'll tell me gains as long as you use the same source, right? Same pink, pink noise stick or something like that. As long as that level stays the same, you can adjust your head amp gain, you can adjust your, your EQ curves so your strips sound the same. You can also verify that through the mix. Like if channel one is going through this strip that I've already set up for the gain and set up the EQ, does it look the same on the outside of the mix, you know, past your, your mix bus or your auxiliary or whatever situation you're in, if it's front of house or if it's monitors. You can get a leg up on things before the band comes in and starts. Of course, different consoles are going to sound a little bit different. Your dynamics are going to be an issue to, to settle in. But at least if an artist says, hey, I really like my vocal to sound like this, maybe there's a lot of 2K5 in it, something like that. At least you can mimic that right away and you're starting from that point. So let's get back to this. One of the things I like about this plugin is you can go zero latency here. Let's see, like right here. And you notice zero latency. But now if I switch to linear phase, okay, that tells me phase is all, is all weird. Time needs to be adjusted. There it is. So that plugin at 96K actually adds 106 milliseconds. So we get the benefit of the curve. Yeah, you can see even more, we're still a little bit off. It's gonna take a little bit of butt scene there. We're off, but it does not affect our phase response. Funny enough, 106, that's about what it is when you're sitting at front of house and you're having to mix. <laughs> mix a show, that's about your latency on, on amphitheaters and, and arenas and all that stuff. So it might be good practice if you're if you haven't done that to actually be able to anticipate your your throws and such. But that's something that happens is you can transfer certain EQ curves to another EQ that maybe you have. Or if you have a hardware EQ and you, you have a setting that you really like, but now you need to do it in the box, you can do it by ear. Sure, you can do that. But here, this kind of tells you what's going on behind the scenes. Um, as a for instance, let me turn this off. Actually, let me go back to here. So I'm going to save this. Okay, so I'm going to take this off, out of here. No plug-in. Response is going to go crazy. Yeah, back to zero. I'm trying to find it. Let's just do this. All right, back to zero. But if we, there's a plugin that came out, and I thought, man, what's going on in the background here, right? But this is interesting. So all that phase issue that tells you that um, that the priority or that the, the time is wrong. Let me take this trace off of here. To this. Okay, so we're gonna calculate our time again. One millisecond with this. And this plugin is actually Magma Tubes. I like this one. It's simple, it does a good job. Of of adding something special to the sound. But you see this transformer right here. So this is something that's, that people, whether they realize it or not, is missing in the digital world, is the, just the things that transformers were doing to our sound. When you're inducting via electromagnetics a signal across an iron core, it's not instantaneous and it 
doesn't go away right away. The, the, the iron core kind of, um, retain some of that information. So there's some harmonics that are held over and things like that, but it also just affects the sound a little bit. So if I turn this off, right, there's our, our phase up top and our frequency response down below back to zero. But what is the transformer doing? Adding a little bit of low end. It's shifting our phase up here because there's probably, you know, like a high pass in there. You know, that's probably what they're modeling, but starting 400 Hertz, to do in here. Just give, it a, give us a couple dB. Just a couple dB at 125 all the way down, down to 50 or so. So there's little things that go on the, on the background um, that are useful. So if you like this type of video, what's going on in the background, things that I do just to keep learning, keep moving forward, uh, give it a like and a comment, subscribe. And I'll do more of these and I'll also try to throw in Actually, more than try, I will be doing some some videos where I'm tuning PAs and things I run into live. Um, so until next time, take care.